Good morning, this is Sharon from the House of Prayer. When you feel overwhelmed, we live in a world that has been described by many as a time of overwhelming situations, overwhelming concern. That's not a word that we used a lot until recently. A lot of people today are overwhelmed. We all know the troubles of the world have a way of seeping into our lives even as Christians, and we get overwhelmed by these problems. The issues of life can inundate our personal world, so we don't know which direction we're going. And even though we know Jesus Christ, if you don't stay focused on the principles of the Word of God, we can get lost and wonder sometimes how we ever get back. We get overwhelmed by our marriage breaks down the way you were never thinking it would do. A child goes off the rail. Maybe you lost somebody that you love very much. A business falls apart. There is so much to get overwhelmed by. You know, one of the most common complaints that people have in today's modern world is in this sentence. You know, I just feel overwhelmed. I feel overwhelmed and there's really a lot to feel overwhelmed about because there's too much of everything in our world. There's too much information that there's no way you can keep up with all the information that's going on. There's too much news. You don't need to know all the news that's going on in the world, but it's everywhere. There are too many emails there's too much social media. There's too many toothpaste in the grocery store. And it can be overwhelming. A lot of people are overwhelmed in debt. They're just in debt. They go, I'm never going to get out of debt. I'm never going to get these loans paid off. And I'm just overwhelmed. A lot of people are overwhelmed by work. I can't keep up. There's too much to do. And I just seem to get farther and farther behind. And I never get a break. I'm worn out. The Bible talks a lot of people who are overwhelmed by regret. They're overwhelmed by shame or by guilt. In fact, you could be overwhelmed by any emotion. You can be overwhelmed by worry. A lot of people are overwhelmed by insecurity. And the more insecure you are, the more you try to control the things around you. You can be overwhelmed by loneliness. You can be overwhelmed by grief. You can be overwhelmed by anger, resentment, bitterness. You can be overwhelmed by worry and what to do when you feel overwhelmed. Financially, physically, when you feel overwhelmed by conflict, this marriage is going south. It isn't going the way I want it to go. We're in a stalemate right now. We're living in the same house, but it's not happening. What do you do when you feel overwhelmed? Turn to God for help. I'm going to turn to God first. Often when we feel overwhelmed, we start planning. Now, planning is a good thing. And you ought to plan. But you ought to pray before you plan. You need to turn to God before you turn to your plan. Prayer should be your first choice when you feel overwhelmed, not the last resort. Okay, now, personally for you, there's no problem too big for you to pray about. And there's no problem too small for you to pray about. It's a big enough problem for you to worry about. It's big enough for you to go pray about it. If it's small enough for you to worry about, it's small enough for you to go pray. The second thing is focus on God and not the problem. But it all depends on what your focus is on. When you pray, you turn the focus off of the problem. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough energy. I don't have enough help. I don't have enough wisdom. I don't have enough opportunity. 
you turn yourself off the problem and you turn it on the solution, which is God. If you look at the world, you'll be distressed. If you look within, you'll be depressed. A lot of things I don't like about me, but if you look at Christ, you'll be at rest. It all depends on what you've got your eyes on. If all you're looking at is a negative and the problem in your life, guess what? You're going to be feeling overwhelmed. When I'm feeling overwhelmed, I need to focus not on the how big my problem is, but how big my God is. The bigger you realize God is, the smaller your problem seems. Problems shrink when God expands in your life. The bigger your God is, the smaller your problems are. The first thing I need to do is remember that God is all-powerful. God is in control. That nothing is too hard for him. When with God, all things are possible. Second, remember what God has done for you in the past. And realize, you know what? I've been through a lot of tough times and I survived those. God helped me through other times in the past, and he was certainly going to help me through this one. I remind myself, I recall, I recollect, I remember all the ways that God has helped me in the past. I know who you are, and I know what you've done. You need to remind yourself of others. Two things when you're feeling overwhelmed. God is a big God, and God has helped you in the past. This is what the Lord says to you who are overwhelmed. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the battle is not yours but God's. The reason why you tried all the time is because why you're tired all the time it's because you're trying to fight battles that belong to God. And you don't have the energy. You don't have the knowledge. You don't have the power. And you're acting like you're God. If it's to be, it's up to me. And you're frantically trying to make it happen. And you get tired. You are trying to fight God's battle. God says, did I ask you to fight these guys? No, I didn't. All I ask you to do is trust me. Have I not promised to take care of you? Have I not taken care of you in the past? It's not your battle. It's my battle. See, this is why we get into problems. The problem is not your problem. The problem you think is you, is up to you to solve. So we get out there and we're such fixers. And when we see a relationship problem, we try to fix it. When we see a financial trial, we try to fix it. We try to fix the world. We try to fix the office. We try to fix the faults in other people. We can't even fix the faults in ourselves. Why are you trying to fix the, them in somebody else's life? And, and we're always just frantically trying to control. And the more insecure and the more out of control your life feels, the more controlling you become. And that's not a nice person to live with. We go out and we try to fix things in our own instead of turning to God. We think it's our battle. We're inevitably going to fail. And we are come crawling back to God and we say, Oh God, I'm so sorry. We got our tail between our legs. I'm so sorry, God. I really failed, God. I've really let you down. And, and God says, No. You didn't let me down because you weren't holding me up. You didn't let me down because you weren't holding me up. You don't hold up God. He holds you up. You don't help God. He helps you. You didn't let God down because you weren't holding him up. 
He says, it's not your battle in the first place. It's my battle. This is why you're tired all the time. You're not holding up the world. You're not holding up God. This is what a lot of you are doing with your problems. Are you tired? Are you tired of facing all of these battles on your own? You're really, if it's true, you're about ready to say, God, I don't know how much longer I can do this. In fact, Lord, I'm on the verge of giving up. God will say to you, great. It's about time. Now we can get something done. Once you realize you are not in control of your life, you think you are. Are you kidding me? You didn't choose when you were born, where you were born, why we were born. We didn't choose your parents. You didn't choose their natural giftedness. You didn't choose your death. Most of the biggest things in life, you didn't choose your natural talents. They're totally beyond your control. And the only thing you can choose is your attitude. And you do have 100% control over that. And you do control how much you choose to trust God. Say, God, I just give up. And finally God says, well, great. Now we can get something done. God says, first relax. It's my battle. It's not yours. Second thing he says is, I'll handle it. God says this to you. And when you bring him the thing you feel overwhelmed by, he says, relax. I'll handle it. That's my job. How many times have I told you the antidote to stress is to repeat three times. God is God and I'm not. God is God and I'm not. God is God and I'm not. Why does God tell you to not get upset when you're overwhelming in that situation? Question, if God is fighting the battle and he's told you to stand still and watch, has God ever lost a battle? No. God has never lost any battle that he chooses to fight. God doesn't lose battles. He's God. God wins. When he's saying is you don't need to worry about this, you don't need to get upset because you're on the winning side. There are things that are evil in the world and that we have to oppose. But God says ultimately, we win in the end.